The SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus that causes COVID, jumped from animals into humans in 2019. Whereas HIV, that jump occurred 100 years ago, in around 90, in the 1920s, perhaps. And it became a problem in the 1980s when it started expanding in, in human populations to a much greater extent. But the reason we've seen such a push on the COVID vaccine is because of the urgency. Just in the last year, COVID has infected almost 70 million people on the planet. COVID has killed one and a half million people this year. So this urgency comes about despite the fact that we've all seen dramatic changes in everybody's life with changes to travel and social distancing and masks and hand washing and sanitizer. And yet we've still seen this rapid rise in infections. So this produces a huge urgency to make a vaccine. And of course, it has a massive economic impact. There are fundamental differences between COVID and HIV. Although they're both viruses, COVID is a very simple infection. The disease can be complicated and sometimes mysterious, but almost everyone infected with COVID develops antibodies to the spike protein, and this neutralizes the virus and leads to recovery with clearance of the virus. In contrast, almost everybody infected by HIV develops antibodies, and we use those antibodies in regular HIV tests that are done all the time to tell whether I'm infected with HIV or not. But unfortunately, very few clear the infection, and those antibodies are not sufficient to neutralize the HIV. Whereas the HIV envelope, which is more or less like a spike, is a complex structure on the surface of the HIV virus. It's coated with sugars, and the active site is deep inside, so it's hard to engage with it for the antibodies. Over time, as people are infected with HIV, some people do develop antibodies able to neutralize HIV, but that can take many years. And furthermore, HIV is a retrovirus. We talk about antiretrovirals, and a retrovirus is a virus that copies its genetic code and integrates it into the human genetic code. And as it copies its genetic code, it doesn't do it accurately. It makes many mistakes. And what that means is that the envelope protein and HIV itself is constantly changing, shifting its shape, making it difficult for antibodies to protect against it. So even the neutralizing antibodies from one individual often fail to neutralize the, anti the virus from a different individual. And thus eventually we have now found some so-called broadly neutralizing antibodies that broadly neutralize many different strains of HIV. And those are the antibodies that people are studying at the moment and trying to see whether or not they protect people from catching different strains of HIV. And they could be an important part of the process for developing a vaccine against HIV if we could get broadly neutralizing antibodies to be generated before the HIV infection occurred. Finally, we have to remember that unlike COVID or maybe partly unlike COVID, HIV depends a lot on T cells, the other half of the human defense system. So the human immune system has antibodies, but it also has so-called cellular immunity, which is led by T cells. And that's much harder to study and much more varied. And it also makes HIV difficult and different from COVID when it comes to developing a vaccine. Each year, for the past decade, we've invested around $1 billion in research and development to try to produce an HIV vaccine. Is that a lot or is it not enough? It's about 5% of the global HIV response budget. But we clearly won't have a vaccine in the short term in the way that we have with COVID. If we think of Africa, where most of the deaths from HIV occur, 
tuberculosis, malaria, and HIV each kill more than five times as many people per year as COVID has killed in Africa this year. These are huge problems and they've been going on for a long time. We have a vaccine against TB, the BCG vaccine. It was first used 100 years ago, starting in 1920. And unfortunately, it doesn't really protect against the common adult forms of tuberculosis. Just recently, new vaccines have been discovered against both tuberculosis and malaria, but they don't work particularly well. And so there, there are discussions about whether to scale them up because they only have a protective efficacy of 30% or less. The good news is that a new malaria vaccine has just gone into big phase three trials in Africa. And in fact, it's produced by the same setup that has produced the AstraZeneca Oxford COVID vaccine. So the hope is that the research that's being done on COVID vaccines may act as a shot in the arm for all the other important infectious disease killers that actually kill many, many more people in Africa and other resource constrained parts of the world than COVID is doing. <laughs>